welcome to another episode of Streaming Safari here at the Lion Habitat Ranch. As always, I'd like to thank you guys if you've been able to come out and see us. And we are open and it is a beautiful day. So if you're lounging around your house this weekend and you're like, what am I going to do? I don't have anything to do. I ran out of episodes of Game of Thrones or whatever you're watching. Uh, Outlander. <laughs> You uh, can come and see us. We are open every week, Thursday to Monday from 11 to 3. So please come out. Uh, it is my favorite way to make donations to us. So uh, please come visit us and come see Aussie Paint. Uh, speaking of Aussie Painting, if you are looking for any special Christmas gifts, Aussie's paintings always make a very unique gift. He paints all kinds of different things. If you come out and see us, you can check out his artwork. Uh, if you don't have the chance to come out and see us, you can still check out his artwork online. I think you can even make some special requests for colors if you want to. Something to match your uh, living room or your friend's living room or something. Or their favorite colors. Or, their, or just their favorite colors. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you can find really cool Christmas gifts. And uh, again, thank you for any donations that you've made. And as always, all those links are right down below. And if you didn't know, today, December 4th, is that what we're on? Yep. December 4th is World Wildlife Conservation Day. So this is a day about making everyone aware of the problems that wildlife goes through. Mostly bird tap. And bird tap. <laughs> bird tap. Bird chat will be in five minutes. Ask a keeper near you for location. Streaming Safari is brought to you by Birchall. <laughs> uh, so as I was saying, uh, World Wildlife Conservation Day is to make everyone aware of the struggles that wildlife can go through a lot due to humans. So there's a lot of things that we do when we decide to live in certain places that can really affect the wildlife that lives there. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that today. And we're going to talk about ways that we can just improve the way that we live to make it more comfortable for the wildlife around us. And one of the things that I wanted to uh, talk about was volunteering. And we have one of our lovely volunteers, Leslie, with us today. And I wanted Leslie to talk to you guys a little bit about what she does here at the ranch. So I come here on the weekends. You can find me here every Saturday and Sunday. Um, I do lots of fun things. Sometimes I might be helping in the gift shop. Sometimes I might be just walking around the property, um, helping make sure everything's cleaned up and picked up. Um, and then on the really special days, um, I am fortunate enough that I get to go behind the railings and feed some of our lions. Um, it's a really great thing to do. I really love it. Uh, the staff sees me here all the time, so I work seven days a week. Um, and I might not get paid as a volunteer, but the education that you get here, I learn something new every day. And it's so much fun to meet people who come out and to talk about our lions and Aussie and our birds and tortoises. It's really an amazing, amazing place. And if somebody wants to volunteer, do you know what they have to do? Yes, they just have to go to our website. There is an area on the website, how can I help? You click on volunteer, fill out a form. You will get an email back quite promptly from someone here at the ranch. And then all you have to do is fill out a little bit more paperwork, come to an orientation, and then you're set, you're ready to go. You sign up for the things that you wanna do. You can hold Ozzy's art. Um, just know if you do that, you are probably going to get some extra manicures, hair streaks. Um, I'm face streaking. I'm face working face. on a custom Aussie shirt right now. Um, but it's a lot of fun and it's really something great to do. If you can't come out here, um, we are a nonprofit and we run 100% off of donations. So anything that you can do to help. Uh, really helps this. Is there a, a number of hours that volunteers need to participate in for it's, the ranch? It's whatever you can do. You know, um, you can come in the mornings, you can help clean the property, you can come while we're open to the public, um, and as much as you can do, as much as you want to do, uh, it's just a really rewarding thing. Awesome. And we love our volunteers. Yes, we love our volunteers so much. <laughs> uh, and Leslie and I have a couple of things to show you real quick before I have a fun activity for you guys this week. It's not quite an experiment, but it will be a very fun activity, I think, uh, that Denise may or may not be prepared for. There may or may not be math. I'm just kidding. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things that we 
want to talk about that's really important on a day where we're thinking about wildlife and conservation and the things that we can do to help protect wildlife and just live our lives in general um, around that wildlife is we there's a big problem out there with poaching so of course we have a lot of lions here on property they're considered one of the big five or the group of animals that people would like to go out and hunt and have as trophies but it's really, really detrimental to those populations and not a good thing to be doing to your animals. So we have brought you a number of things that you could have as trophies instead of going out and actually hunting and farming these animals. So we have a lot of cool things that we get here at the ranch. One thing that we actually do is bathe our lions and we get a lot of lion hair from them. We actually do use a hairbrush to get this out of them. They also do shed their hair pretty often, I'd say. <laughs> and uh, this lion hair we get from them, and so something like this is not gonna hurt an animal. Um, if you have or find you come across something like this if you're visiting in Africa. Also, if we're talking about something like our birds or our macaws, what is this looking? I believe that looks like a feather from Angelo. Angelo or Z? Angelo. shed these feathers so this is another thing that you can get from an animal that doesn't require you touching them doesn't require you harming them in any way they're going to shed these feathers this looks like probably a tail feather to me and they just fall out naturally and if you find these they're, they're a great thing to collect um they're very beautiful you can you know some of our keepers i know have feathers like displayed in their homes so <laughs> they're very cool things to have we also have uh as we've seen before our emu and ostrich eggs which are also really neat if you have especially unfertilized eggs from birds that are laying those eggs you can always keep those as a nice keepsake and so there's lots of things that you can do and one of the last things i wanted to make sure i showed you guys was a little paw print so if you're out hiking or you're you know visiting somewhere on a, even a safari and you come across a paw print um, you can actually take a, a print of that and just you know have that as a very unique thing that you can display in your home you sometimes have those in the gift shop and make a great christmas gift as well <laughs> <laughs> all right so um in addition to this i have a wonderful game for you guys so i want uh actually i'm going to take the phone from you James, oh no and you and leslie are going to come down in front of the jeep for me and we're going to play a little conservation game and so what I've done is I've designed this little conservation game where we've got these little cards for you. And so you each have a set of cards and you have three different, you're gonna have three different sets. So your first set is gonna be a set of blue cards and it asks you, I'm gonna ask you two different questions with them. And they're gonna talk about what, what, the, uh, what the wildlife is. Essentially just kinda, kinda what it is, where it comes from and what its status is. We have another set of red cards that are going to tell us things that might be dangerous to those animals or might be harming uh, their lives in the wild. And then we're going to have a list of cards that is for things that you can do to help those animals um, live better lives. Well, I'm assuming each of us gets a set of cards. Yes, each of you gets a set of cards. They should include the same things. And I think the cool thing that we can do with this is for each of these cards that you put down, we're going to give you a point for getting it right. <laughs> okay. All right. And then okay. you guys can play along at home. I'm assuming. Yes, <laughs> you can play along at home. Uh, you can totally, I literally just made this. Um, so I came up with this game uh, this morning, actually. <laughs> and I think it's it's really fun. So if you guys want to make your own cards, it's a really easy thing to do. Um, you'll just have to have somebody that picks the animals for you. And uh, you guys can write down all kinds of different things that um, can help with conservation and things that might affect animals uh, in the wild. The and you could type it in the comments. I don't even have a game for this, uh, a name for this game either so if you guys come up with a name for it um that would be cool too okay so what i'm going to show you guys is a picture of an animal and you're going to put down what you think about this animal so do we know what animal this is we do it's a lion it's a lion this is an african <laughs> lion so what i want to ask you first is is this species endangered or least concerned i'm going to say endangered 
danger. Okay, go ahead and put your cards on either side of the lion. Perfect. Okay, so they both said endangered. Now, is this species a native species or an invasive species where it lives? Where it lives. Yes. Well, okay, that was kind of a giveaway, I guess. Where it, where it currently inhabits, yes. <laughs> okay, so it's native. And what was my last one that you guys have there? Okay, so now you're going to move on to the red deck. And from your red deck, you got a bunch of stuff listed in there. You can put down as many cards as you want. And I want you to tell me what things are threatening this species. Ooh, we got a lot. Um, I think all of them. All of them? All right. Yeah. Okay. So... <laughs> All of the things that we've listed here for our cards, we have climate change, low genetic diversity, pollution, human encroachment, food availability, habitat loss, poaching, and poisoning. Did you know that farmers will actually poison their livestock to hurt other predators in Africa? And that's actually how the poisoning takes effect. <laughs> Yes, so that is something that does happen with lots of predators and with lions. So I think you're totally correct about all of this. Probably a lot of this is going to be affecting our lions in particular. When the, and also for low genetic diversity, because they are losing a lot of their habitat, they don't have as many of them. And also their habitat, the little that they do have, they're far more spread out. So they're not able to actually kind of diversify their genetics anymore. So that's another thing. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. And then finally, you have one more set of cards. That's a set of cards of how you could help lions. And I want you to pick which one of those you think are the best to help the lions out. <laughs> okay, so so Leslie, what was your list? I think we put down all the cards. What did we have? Observe animals safely, uh, support sanctuaries and research, education, and reduce, reuse, and recycle your materials at home. And, at and of course, volunteer, and right? And of course, volunteer. <laughs> volunteer. Um, and so I think for lions, you know, one of these things that I want to point out that's on this list is observe animals safely. So what you can do instead of deciding to go out and hunt animals in the wild, you could instead take pictures of them, which is our favorite way I to... Like your, uh, molding for that's a good one. Oh, yes. Yeah. And molding for paw prints. Yeah. So observe the animals from a safe distance. Make sure that you're keeping their environment nice for them and take lots of pictures of them. And then you can share them and and they're just amazing. Like I think dude is over there laying upside down. Like that's the He's silliest thing down. to take a picture of. <laughs> come visit the lion habitat. And come visit the lion habitat. so close to the lions. Okay. So grab your cards up and we're going to try. Let's do one more. Uh, one more. So I have a couple more of these. So basically I just printed out some pictures and then, uh, I picked some to go with and, uh, we're going to do this one next actually. <laughs> that I was going to pick the lionfish. Okay. We, maybe we can do the lionfish cause that one should be quick too. So, okay. Um, do you guys know what this is? It is a frog of some kind. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it is a relic. Uh, frog and this frog is actually I picked this frog in particular because this is a frog that's actually native to our area this frog lives in Nevada <laughs> so I gave you the answer to the first question is it endangered or least concern I'm gonna say he's endangered okay okay <laughs> And then, <laughs> yes, I will give you the answer in a second. Uh, so if you think that he's endangered, what do you think is are some of the things that are most concerning for him? So grab your red deck, Leslie. Denise has given up because she said he's least concerned. I don't know anything about relic Habitat loss, which would also affect his food availability, the human encroachment, pollution, climate change. And I would say people are probably poisoning them too. 
Well, depending on what they eat, if they kill yeah. other things that maybe they eat with yeah. poison, they could ingest that. That's actually yeah. a problem for hawks. Awesome. And then, <laughs> Denise, you can even put these ones down if you want. What are things that we could do to help the relic frog out if... Uh, help them out. E help them out in general. Even if, they, even if they're least concerned, we still want to help out our animals. All of the things. We okay. All of the We've things. got all of the things. Okay. Uh, you guys don't might not know too much about this frog, but actually UNLV, our, our local university, does some research on them. And they're actually... Uh, they are they are threatened they are a threatened species and it's mostly because of low genetic diversity but all those other things that leslie said are really important too um, they live in the area kind of around lake mead and so there can be a lot of pollution in that area there's a lot of people that like to do their boating there and things and uh hang out at the hot springs there where these where these guys like to live so we can do things to even help out our uh, animals that live in the local area and then scoop up your cards one more time uh, just because Denise wanted me to throw this one out there and I think it'll be a little bit of a quicker one. Um, what is this guy? Lionfish. This guy is a lionfish. And is a lionfish uh, where it currently lives uh, native or invasive? Denise is going with invasive. You must know what this is. I'm <laughs> going with okay. So I'm a cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater. <laughs> because my friend did a pro she actually worked with people who do a lot with the lionfish project down in florida they're a very invasive species so they work with local communities trying to get the lionfish population under control were lionfish brought in from mm -hmm. somewhere else people get them as pets and then they release them into the ocean and they just happened uh to do really really well in that area and now they are a problem for other native species in that area do you know one of the ways that they're actually working to get rid of the lionfish? I know that, at least for her project, they do a lot of capture and they actually use them for fishing for people to eat. Yeah, they actually people actually eat them. Yeah, and it's and it's cool because it's a it's a species that you don't have to worry so much if you're getting them from the from the Atlantic from the East Coast, um, just because they are pretty abundant there, and those are things that you need to keep uh, pay attention to as well. And yeah, so that one was pretty quick. Yeah, <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys so much for watching and you guys can say bye today <laughs> and we hope to see you again next week. Bye, Come guys. visit us <laughs> Thursday through Monday, 11 a.m. 3 p.m.